Hark, we are here. It is time for yet another comprehensive review of the week of Star Wars Limited. I still am sick from the US Nationals event that I was at uh, last, not the weekend that just passed, but the weekend before that as of hosting of this video, whatever. I will do my best. It's not gonna be as high energy, but we do have a lot to go over. We have a booster pack stream. We have a bunch of creator previews. We've got a TCG player article. We've got a couple of other things and we have previews. We have card previews, including a short recap of my own preview that was showcased last week. So let's get to it, get into the reviews and all the other information that you guy, you all come to expect from me here at Ryback Stun for Star Wars Unlimited. Our first preview in our line comes by way of TCG player themselves. And it's a really cool preview that matches in with the theme of the previous week, not necessarily command, but the theme of Rebels. And we have Sabine Wren, explosive artist, Two cost aggression heroism ground unit, two power, three health, Mandalorian rebel specter. While there are at least three aspects among other friendly units, this unit cannot be attacked unless she gains Sentinel. On attack, you may deal one damage to the defender or to a base. It's an uncommon number 142 out of 252 in SOR. Sabine is built for speed. She wants to go in and start blasting things and taking units off the board. She has a nice little defensive mechanic that if you have two other units on the board that have three aspects between them, different aspects, you will be able to protect her from being attacked by another unit. So for example, if you had, if you were running this in a Sabine deck and your off color was vigilance, so aggression, vigilance, heroism. If you had Kane and Jairus, who we'll talk about later, vigilance and heroism, and then you had Star Wing Scout, which is just aggression, you now have covered all three aspects required. It is three different aspects. I, I understand it says three aspects, but the reason why it, it is different is because that is two, two cards of aggression are still considered one aspect. It's, it's just something that a lot of people are gonna have to come to deal with. I've heard a lot of confusion about this card. I've heard a lot of confusion about a card that we'll talk about later. It's, it's one of those things where there are common rules occurrences that people who aren't familiar with TCGs don't know as much as those of us who've been playing TCGs for 30 years. We just have to guide others to the right place and the right answers. Anyway, three different aspects is what required. The big thing for her is that she comes out and on the next turn, she can attack and deal two damage. But before that, you can pop a shield on the defender if you're attacking the defender. Or if you're attacking the base, then you just deal the extra damage to the base. You're dealing three damage at that point. Sabine's probably the type of character that's just going to continuously hit your opponent's base. So that way you can get that three damage off a two cost card. And I think Sabine is fantastic. This art is, is amazing. This uh, background here is very familiar to those who have watched the FFG streams because you can see some of this in their background and it's pretty cool. Lots of relevant keywords. Uh, one relevant keyword now, technically two, Rebel is absolutely relevant. Spectre is becoming relevant. And I'm hoping we're going to see something down the line that makes it so that all the Spectres can combine into one deck. That would be probably what would be my main deck if that ends up being the case. But uh, Mandalorian, I hope, is future proofing for other sets when you can just combine all your Mandalorians together. For those of you who are familiar with Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, the Mandalorian team, which just brings together Mandalorians from a bunch of different eras, is really fun because it's basically just Maul leading all the disparate Mandalorian clans together, which is fun. Anyway, fantastic card here. Really excited to continue to use her. Really excited to get a bunch of her into my hands. And yeah. Our next card is a very popular-ish character, definitely within the FFG crew. I see you, Josh. And it's a character that I'm excited about. And you're also going to see a sneak preview. It's something I'm going to talk about later within this image because I chose not to just grab the single card. You'll understand what I mean here. And that is Kanan Jarrus, Revealed Jedi. Four cost, vigilance, heroism, ground unit. Four power, five health. Force, Jedi, rebel, specter. On attack, you may discard one card from the depending, defending player's deck for each friendly specter unit. Heal one damage from your base for each different aspect among those discard cards. It is an uncommon number 47 out of 252 in SOR. Now you'll note here, we've got two cards. We've got a card here on the left, which is your standard template for the way that cards look. And on the right here, this is what's known as a hyperspace template. So for those of you that are familiar with magic this is kind of like borderless or extended art for those of you that aren't familiar with magic it's basically the same art you just get more of it with the little hyperspace lines around the actual uh edges of the card itself 
So I will talk more about the hyperspace cards themselves when it comes to the FFG live stream, the TCG player article and the FFG article about booster packs. But for right now, there are alternate art cards that can be seated within the boosters that give you an opportunity at higher, not rarity, but higher value cards in the sets while still maintaining having regular versions of cards that are easy enough to chase. Kanan himself, however, is a really good four cost card. I, I do slightly wish he was six health, but I understand why he's five. You don't want him to get too out of hand, but a four cost, four five with relevant keywords, Force Rebel Spectre, who has an on attack that allows you to, if you really want to focus on it, mill based upon the number of Spectre units you have. But realistically, it's a, by himself, he is a four cost, four five attack discard one card off the top of your uh, opponent's deck and heal one damage for uh, from your base it does say heal one damage from your base for each different aspect among the discarding cards so i wonder if you discard one this is probably something to be to ask on a live stream if you discard one card and it has two aspects on it do you heal two i haven't i haven't clarified that yet i will i will try to get that clarified on the next live stream which should be shortly after this stream Anyway, Kanan's dope. Mixing him with Sabine Leader and uh, other Spectres that are coming down the line means that you can get those extra discards for the extra heal. Uh, I don't think you're going to be relying on it as a mill strategy, as, as a, a total uh, strategy for yourself, but being able to do those, those discards to be able to get the heal is going to be very important. And again, Force, very relevant. Keyword right now, Spectre continues to be relevant as we see more Spectre cards, and then Rebel is still a Rebel. If you, if you play this in a uh, Leia Vigilance deck, you'll be able to attack with him as part of her ability or attack after she attacks if she drops as her leader version. Really good card all around. Very, very fun to see. Very hyped for Josh to be able to put this in every one of his decks and be able to play this because it's worth playing. And Kanan Jarrus, very cool character from a very cool show. Our next card is a card all of you should know. And I say this because I was the one that got to preview this. So this next card comes by way of the Ryback Stun YouTube channel. And it is a fantastic card. Ezra Bridger, we're going to do this real quick. Resourceful Troublemaker, three cost, cunning heroism, ground unit, three power, four health, force rebel specter. When this unit completes an attack, look at the top card of your deck. You may play it, discard it, or leave it on top of your deck. Uncommon, 192 out of 252, SOR. Fantastic card, synergizes with the other specters because it is a specter, so it allows you to do extra things. If you are able to throw Ezra and Kanan on the board, Sabine becomes unattackable as part of her effect because you are you are presenting three different aspects, vigilance, heroism, and cunning. Ezra being a 3-4 means that he is able to deal extra damage onto opponents, not extra, but deal sizable damage for a three cost unit onto opponents cards without dying because that four health does mean it's relevant to the amount of damage that most cards in this cost and below are able to do i haven't really seen i think i haven't seen much of anything at three costs or less that can do more than three damage but that's just right now with this card pool anyway pseudo 3po and r2d2 effect you basically look at the top card decide if you want to play it by paying its cost or discarding it if you don't want it or leaving it on top of your deck if you do want it but you just don't want it right now fantastic card great art looks like it's coming straight out of a comic book i said all this in my review my actual preview for this is in the description below please go check it out that video uh, is very important to me it showcases that if you guys like these types of things ffg can give me more opportunities to preview things like this so we just we need to go up with these videos up 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 anyway that's all we're going to do to cover for ezra because i already spent six minutes covering him on friday our last card this week comes by way of the FFG Twitter account, specifically Unlimited FFG, and it is our command unit for the month through the polls and stuff like that. I was kind of hoping it was going to be a leader, but it's a unit. We're going to do something a little bit different today. Because I know I have to sit here and edit the video and go through stuff, I actually haven't really taken a look at this card yet. So we're going to go through this together, and we'll go through the normal stuff that we, we, we do with it, but I'm going to effectively react, Ugh, terrible word, but analyze it in real time as I'm discussing it with you all. It is a command unit, it's space, and it is a pretty cool thing from an older run of Star Wars content. And if you know what it is, congratulations, you too are old AF. 
This is a Consortium Star Viper. It is a three cost command only space unit. Not, it's not only for command, it just doesn't have a secondary aspect. It's a three power, three health space unit, fringe vehicle fighter. While you have the initiative, this unit gains restore two. It is a common, it is number 112 out of 252 in SOR. My first memory of the Star Viper is from Shadows of the Empire. This was used by Izor, Sizor, Prince Shizor, whatever you want to call him, in the very end of the game where he was fighting uh, Dash Rendar and the Outrider on the Skyhook thing. I, there might have been a couple of these, uh, but I do specifically remember Izor using one of these. I used to have the Micro Machines Micro Fleet version of this. That was pretty cool. I know that X-Wing had one of these for a while. I think one of these may have been in Destiny, but don't quote me on that. It's a cool little ship nonetheless. I like seeing things from the older versions of Star Wars being brought forward, even if they aren't exactly the ones that we know and expect. Um, but this is a, a cool little fighter. It is a basically the three cost three three. And if you happen to have the initiative when you're attacking, you get Restore 2. Now, I'm curious if they're going to add more effects into the game that allow you to take the initiative without actually changing over the course of the turn to the opponent. You used to be able to do that with Claim the Battlefield effects in Star Wars Destiny, which I think are fine because the battlefield itself is not in this game, and that was a much stronger piece of tech on the board compared to just taking the initiative. But this kind of also conflicts with the Star Wing Scout, where that one is, if it's destroyed while you have the initiative, you draw two cards. We'll have to figure out exactly what they want to do with this while you have the initiative theme, sub-themes, subset slight mechanic lean that they have for it cool looking ship though a three cost three three in space is not terrible especially if you can get that restore you just got to build around your turn to be able to be like cool i have this i don't need to do anything else take the initiative on the next round pop get, uh, get some extra health back to your base if you're going heavy space probably a three of in a command deck if you're not going heavy space one or two this will be a very good draft card very good limited card draft and sealed you're going to want this a lot because there are probably aren't going to be a lot of key crucial decisions you'll have to make in terms of playing before taking the initiative in each round. This is a fun little ship that I think is probably gonna see a little bit of play, probably not a lot, but a little bit of play. And obviously, Shadows of the Empire rules, so. Our next thing here that we're gonna go through is going to be a supplement for the following segment, which is going to be talking about the live stream and a couple of the different articles. I'm gonna show you the cards that I have so far when it comes to the alternate arts and things that we're going to see within the booster packs itself. And then we'll go over all of that when we look at some of these specific articles and talk about the live stream. So first things first, we have Admiral Akbar, which we've seen before, and this is the hyperspace variant. Similar to Kanan Jarrus, it's got that open border, you have the lines, it's got the big art it pops more on the card these cards have ratio that i don't remember off the top of my head it will be discussed as we go through the article itself you i believe are expected to see two of these in every three packs and they are they're basically that like second level up you'll have the regular card you'll have a foil then you'll have the hyperspace then you'll have the hyperspace foil the reason why these are being designed like this is so that way people have things that they can chase that they want to do really good with cards that are going to be very popular for players who really want things like i'll be trying to chase down all the specters as uh, hyperspace cards probably even as hyperspace foils i'm definitely going to be chasing down any leaders that might come in hyperspace we know that luke and vader their gen con versions are technically hyperspace so hopefully we can see hyperspace leaders in the actual first booster series but this uh admiral akbar looks pretty cool the next card type that we have is actually going to be one of the most important on the left you see leia organa on the right you see her as well but these are what are known as showcase variants showcase variants are one in every 12 boxes. They are the highest rare card that you can possibly get. They're already foil treatment. They have this lovely, beautiful alternate and extended art that you can see. Their text boxes are different. They're just showcased in a in a much more impactful way in front of you. And because they are the leaders of the first thing you see when you open a booster pack, if you open it correctly, you're going to see your showcase right off the bat. These things are going to be rare, but they're going to be valuable. And I already know it's going to cost me a pretty penny to try to chase Boba Fett and Sabine Wren and whatever others 
uh, Rebels cards that'll be leaders for these. Showcase is only leaders currently, which means at this point in time, there are only 16 Showcase cards in the first set. And that's one for every leader that's not a starter leader. But Showcase being the rarest of the rare will be the most valuable card. They are gonna be the chase card. They're probably gonna be similar to chasing out serialized cards in other card games, such as Flesh and Blood or uh, Magic the Gathering. Hopefully they're accessible because I don't want these to be too expensive. I know that collectors are gonna to wanna to chase them, but at the same time, like, I wanna be able to get mine. Next, we have Command Center here, Hyperspace Command Center. This is what the base showcased to us. Uh, we do know the base, the common bases have a token on the back. So I'm curious if the token will also be hyperspace because that'd be pretty baller. But for right now, we do know that just the bases themselves are going to be hyperspace. Next, we have a hyperspace open fire here. You can see it's just that open footprint. It's got the extra blast on the side, the hyperspace lines. And then last, we have hyperspace vigilance, which actually looks really cool. Uh, they are numbered past the regular set numbers. The way that people have figured it out is, is that the whole set is 252. You add 16 for the showcase leaders, then you take the number that the card is in the set, change 10 because there aren't starter hyperspace cards, and uh, or 12 because of the leaders as well. And that's how they get the number here for these. That's just for the number junkies. You don't really have to worry about it if you don't care about that. These hyperspace cards are dope. This is actually would be a really cool like card to just have as like a little center point in your binder to be like, haha, this is cool. Anyway, uh, hyperspace is probably going to be, they're, they're gonna be valuable. Uh, I don't know that they're gonna be super rare because they are uh, like I said, on average, you'll have two of these every three boosters. Um, the rarity of something like a rare or a legendary is going to be much higher, but they do come in different slots. And as we go through the articles themselves, you'll understand what I mean there. But that covers the uh, the actual look of hyperspace cards and showcase. As I said, showcase is, is I, I want to see what the Boa Fett version of this looks like, because that's definitely going to sell me on this rarity. This already looks amazing. It absolutely does. Showcasing, showcasing a character that I really like like as a showcase is going to be crucial going forward. This could get a little complicated, but I'm going to try to simplify it as best I possibly can. This past Wednesday, Fantasy Flight Games had a live stream where they covered the booster pack contents of the booster packs for Spark of Rebellion and likely what will be in booster packs as we move forward through the lifespan of Star Wars Unlimited. Before this, they released their own article covering the contents of booster packs so that people could have their questions ready for the stream. And then on top of that, TCG Player released an article covering the same material but spreading it out a little bit better. And that's the article we're going to focus on here before I transition into the actual stream notes that I have, which have a little bit of additional information. So there's lots of information here. All three of these will be linked in the description below per usual. And we're gonna start right off the bat with TCG Player article. We're not gonna cover the FFG one because the FFG one has a little bit less information than this. And this one's a little bit better laid out than the FFG article, but I do encourage you to go read it if you are interested in having all pieces of information like we do. So you can see the booster pack here. We've already gone over the hyperspace stuff. We've already gone over the showcase stuff. Not going to talk too much about that in this segment outside of ratios. Uh, but what the first thing we do, we see here is, and you can't really see it. It is a 24 booster pack box. That's how many, uh, how many packs will come in a box. We were thinking it could be 36, but I figured that 24 is probably going to be the, the best guess in terms of the average of the way that it should be. And then we have the pack breakdown here. We will have nine commons three uncommons, one rare or legendary, one leader of any rarity, one base only common with a token on the other side, and one foil of any rarity for a grand total of 16 cards per pack. Now before, I said it was gonna be 15, and the, the ratio was gonna be a little bit different than this. I was thinking they were gonna put maybe two rares or a double rare slot, kind of like Bandai does with their games, uh, a couple less commons and one more uncommon, but uh, they added an extra card to the case and they ended up going nine, three, one, one, 
one, one, which is good. So our Star Wars Unlimited pull rates here are going to be you will always have a foil in every pack. One in every uh, in about every eight packs is going to be a legendary Two about in every three packs will be a hyperspace card. That's what I was talking about earlier. A hyperspace rare or legendary is going to be about one in every 15 packs. A foil hyperspace rare or legendary is going to be one in every 50 packs. So some of these will layer on top of each other. Obviously, the, the rate of a legendary is going to be higher than the rate of a, of a of any other card. The rate of a hyperspace card is going to be lower than a hyperspace rare or legendary. But like when you start stacking those things, sure, you get a foil in every pack, but it's not going to be a foil legendary every time. And then it's not every time going to be a foil hyperspace legendary, that type of thing. This is a really good uh, uh, image here covering the the odds ish of each thing so well, a couple of different notes here about the rarities themselves and a very important listing here a rare leader which we do know exists according to this this live stream we'll go over that here in just a minute can be in the leader slot but rare bases which we do know exist cannot be in the base slot so the idea is is that they don't want the rares to be too common for bases in draft and sealed but they don't mind that if the leader has that capability. So the rare bases will be in the rare legendary slot, but rare leaders will stay in the leader slot. And I'm glad this was clarified on this specific page because it wasn't clear during the live stream or in the FFG article. I might have to reread re -read that to see if I'm just dumb. So uh, we do have, we, we've gone over the hyperspace variants, we've gone over foil variants, we've gone over showcase variants, and then this gives a, a breakdown of what this stuff is gonna mean for uh, draft and sealed what it's going to mean for collectors what it's going to mean for players of games all kinds of other stuff and that's how that's covered there we got a lot of the inf basic information kind of already covered for the way that boosters are going to look i like the pack spread uh, i think there might be too many commons but i know that they want the majority of draft and sealed to be common based so i do understand it i would i would love to have seen them take one common and put that in the uncommon slot going forward this is what the pack structure is going to look like and that's pretty good now in terms of the live stream we had josh danny and jeremy going over the booster pack stuff danny goes into what a booster pack is which we just talked about the goals are twofold they want to make packs work for limited and they want to make packs the uh, opening packs fun which is both are good good options good things to be able to get covered so that way players can be interested in the game that they're playing right danny did confirm that draft will be three booster packs not four not five, not two, three booster packs. Good, good information to have. In addition to going over what the actual pack has in it, they actually told us what the order of the pack is going to be. So if you open the pack correctly and you, and you see a card back, flip it around and then you're at the front, right? The first card you will see in every single pack is your leader, which means if you get a showcase leader, it will be the first thing you see if you open the pack correctly. First card in the pack, uh, you can have common leaders, you can have rare leaders. Rare leaders have weirder or more complex abilities than common leaders and are harder to build a limited deck around. This is where I believe part of my speculation for a Spectre leader being able to eliminate the aspect penalty on Spectres might stem from. Hyperspace leaders can be in that slot. We do know that the Gen Con leaders are considered hyperspace versions of those leaders, so that's cool. Any card can be hyperspace is what they say, but the showcase leaders are the rarest cards to pull and they are foiled or have a foil treatment. They weren't clear exactly what that meant in the stream. We might get information in that at a later date. That's the leader slot. First card can be hyperspace, Will be, can be rare can be showcase easy peasy right base in every pack it's the second card you have your common base at the front and then a token on the back whether that's the shield or the experience doesn't really matter these can also be hyperspace we did see that hyperspace command center back a while ago like i said i'm kind of hoping on hyperspace bases the token is also hyperspace but we'll have to ask that question at a later date the next we have nine commons in the pack they make up the bulk of your deck we've discovered we've discussed that a little bit before each common in the pack has a chance to be hyperspace next you have three uncommons this makes limited a little bit more interesting but not guaranteed as part of your strategies for building a deck because you have three times as many commons in a pack as you do uncommons your strategy is going to want to be based on how many good commons you can get in your draft pool and what you can pull and draft and the signals that are being sent around the table so on and so forth and then realistically that just comes down to if you see a good uncommon, you want to draft it or you want to use it in your limited pool for sealed, but don't rely on those coming to you because 
they might be stronger, but your basis is still going to be just commons. Next is our rare legendary slot, one card. The odds are slightly better than one in eight. It's like just slightly above one in seven. So realistically in a 24 pack booster box, you can get between three and four le uh, legendaries in each box. But again, because it's not fixed rarity, you want to aim towards having three, but if you don't get those three, that's just unfortunately the way distribution goes. You're hoping for more, but realistically just expect to try to get the even branch for that. Last slot in every pack is a foil. And there was a couple of things that they stated here. A hyperspace rare or legendary will not fill the rare slot. It will fit the uncommon slot. And this is a really good design. This is kind of similar to what Magic the Gathering does with their showcases sometimes. You'll see a showcase earlier on in the pack that has uh, like a borderless or, or extended art or something like that or whatever the showcase frame for the set is. It might have a rare, uh, a rare rarity earlier in the pack or with like set boosters where they just kind of set rares in specific slots depending on how, what each theme of each section of the pack is. But for us, it means that if you do pull a hyperspace rare or legendary, it does not take your regular rare or legendary slot. So theoretically, you could pull a booster pack with three legendaries in it. A hyperspace legendary, a regular legendary, and a foil legendary, which... That'd be nuts. That's like the top end. Well, if, if you pull a showcase out of that pack too, that's probably the highest top end thing that you have. I don't expect to see God packs because I think those are a little bit harder to silo for this style of game, but I don't think it's going to happen. I, I especially don't think we're going to see a God pack with 16 showcase leader cards because what do you do in limited besides just... Buy, have to buy another pack to replace that. Uh, that was actually it for their coverage of the actual booster pack stream. It was a shorter one because a lot of the information was front loaded in those two articles. They did give us the preview of Kane and Jairus, which was really nice. They went through a couple of extra things that involve uh, packs and stuff like that that I've talked about previously. But it'll be interesting to, to actually be able to sit down and crack these packs. A, the pre-release for Star Wars Unlimited is going to be really interesting because it is it will be a lot of players first time playing the game and first experience with having the cards in hand. We've got a lot of print and play players. We got a lot of TTS players. We got a lot of felt table players. So those guys, those individuals are going to have all the a lot of the information beforehand. There's also going to be the subset of people who have already practiced limited before going into this. And I frown upon that greatly, but to each their own. But sitting down with a group of people being able to participate in the pre-release sealed for Star Wars Unlimited is going to be super fun. I am going to try to see if I can work with my local store to organize some out here in my area. I'm going to try to make sure that we have the best experience for a pre-release sealed as we possibly can moving into actually playing the game in stores weekly. So that way everybody has an opportunity to play and we can get competitive. We can get tradey. We can get casual. We can do all the fun things that are required to realistically be a good Star Wars Olympic community. And I hope there are community leaders out there, but where you are, so that way you too can have an excellent experience with Star Wars Unlimited. Support your local leaders, support your LGSs, get in contact with your LGS. They may not know that the game is been, has been advertised, but the more information you can supply to your LGS politely, so that way they know what's coming if they don't already, and you're excited on helping building that community, the more that they're gonna be interested in actually leaning into this and sharing that play space that they have with other games that do exist. Be nice to your LGS, participate in local events, be nice to your local leaders and your judges. Please be nice to your judges. They don't wanna be the judge more often than not, but they're there and they're making sure the games are well run. So yeah. Looking forward to opening booster packs and doing all, all sorts of fun booster things. And that is all she wrote for this week. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me. We had a lot of fun discussing the previews, my preview, other previews, other content creator previews, other website previews, the booster packs. We're speculating on how draft is going to work. It's going to be very interesting to see how all of it does. I had a thought about it. But thinking about it while recording this video, I realized the thought is actually incorrect. So we're not going to say it because I know I'm an idiot, but I don't want to look like an idiot more so than I already do. But yeah, I'm excited for what's coming with Star Wars Unlimited. We are at the end of September. We've got one more stream about products coming right after this video. So make sure you go watch that link to that will be in the description below as well. But you can also search up FFG live over on YouTube to be able to find that probably will be the first or second hit for that. Anyway, that's it. That's all I've got. I don't really have, I don't have anything else. I'm excited. I want more specters. 
I want more. I want to know more about my favorite group in Star Wars. One of my favorite groups in Star Wars. Mandalorians will always be my favorite group. But hey, Sabine is a Mandalorian. Give me them Clan Wren. Anyway, thank you for joining me, folks. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe on this video and to my channel. Hit the bell. Do all the YouTube things that YouTube requires you to do to make my videos successful if you wish to do so. And I would appreciate that greatly. I will see you all probably in chat for the stream, but then also next week for another coverage of Star Wars Unlimited. And with that, I will also see you in the stars.